What is good, everybody? EDM Adam here. Wanted to do my top 25 songs. You'll see my top five on Sidewalk Talk if you haven't already seen those. Uh, but I needed more than five because just too many good songs to review. Couple of notes, shouldn't be any duplicates in terms of artists unless it's like a collab project, you'll see on that. Also, I'm a bit of a purist, so no remixes, VIPs, flips, bootlegs on the list, just originals. And third, it should go without saying that this is completely subjective, so if you don't see any hard style or trans or there's a genre you don't see on here, just my taste. Let's get into it. <laughs> Don Diablo's eyes closed with um, unmarked vocals. Right away what I like about this, he's got like that choral, like chorus effect on the vocals. So you've got like these harmonies stacked, uh, nice effect there. And I'm not much of a house guy, cause you'll see there's not a ton of house on here, but this one, uh, this one does it for me. Yeah, just that real, real deep, unapologetic bass line on top of this kind of like buzzing, almost like white noise sounding like lead. All right, if I get one guilty pleasure, it's gonna be at number 24 with Omit Ozcon, if that's how we pronounce it, Frog Monster, and then Kara on the vocals. Mainstream, feel good, happy-go-lucky. One, two, three, let's go! I just, how do you not love it? It's just, and it's so damn catchy. Like, I could listen to about 20 of these and pass on 19 of them, but this is the one. And like, summer's my favorite season, so you got me. Would be remiss if Audion wasn't on this list. Um, just one of the best songwriters in electronic music, hands down. I just love how warm and kind of like distant the intro feels. Paints a nice atmosphere. You'll probably hear me use that word quite a bit because that's just what I love about a lot of electronic music. And it's like delicate, like down tempo. I mean, he kind of like made his stake in like that modern progressive house, really upbeat feel, but it's just chill, dope atmosphere. Yeah, I can listen to that one on repeat. Quicks, Make Up Your Mind with Jaden Michaels. Um, some of you heard this and probably thought, this kind of sounds familiar. Um, kind of felt like a sequel to uh, Giving Up. Is that the song? Yeah, rich bass line. Piano is a nice touch. Obviously a really, really, really catchy drum and bass track. All right, I have to attribute this one to all my Sidewalk fam and uh, everybody who's commenting over there. This, I, I wasn't even really super aware of ISO uh, up until like midway through this year and this one has been stuck on repeat as well. I think specifically what I like about this, it's just so like cut and dry, straight to the point very digestible trap music, but it's also so damn, like, clean, staccato. Like, just give me a fat 808, clean, staccato, eight notes. And then he has that little, like, triplet lead on, like, the second half of this. Yeah. And then I love, like, what he's done with basically his producer tag. It's like this real tight 16th note, like right in here. Yeah, that's become a staple in his sound and I'm, I'm here for it. All right, more trap music, um, Rem K. This one, I discovered him listening to like Diplo's Revolution on Sirius XM. He had like a nasty set. I think he was playing like some boombox cartel or maybe it was his own stuff. I can't really remember. Caught my eye and then uh, my buddy uh, Ben Foodman, shout out Ben. Uh, reminded me I need to check him out and I just kind of fell in love with this one. I think the drop on this is extremely dynamic too. You've got like kind of these real open like vocoder sounding synth on it. Yeah. 
right here. Like that's got such this like futuristic sound and then it's kind of back to like more of an old school trap feel. And then the ability to take it from like a trap style drop to like four on the floor. And then we just get dirty with the 16s. Sixteen-year-old more kismet called the unicorn Tasha Baxter. This one blew me away. Um, it happened to be the week I was doing the 50 drops in one week, kind of doing the more like rapid style for the weekly reacts on Sidewalk. Also love how this song just kind of goes from real chill, kind of vibey. Yeah, immediately when I heard that, I was like, no way, you gotta be kidding me. So good. And like, this is so clean too. Super impressive stuff. Bit of a down-tempo detox here for you guys. Um, I, I kind of fell in love with 53 Thieves. Uh, just discovered them early 2021. Um, Waterfront. This is one you can just have on repeat in the background doing whatever. And it has like that dark, like liquid feel to it which obviously is the waterfront, but such a smooth sound. Got a little bit of white noise on that lead there. Gives it some nice texture. Kind of reminds me of like what I love and like fell in love with about electronic music. You know, those, those oscillating synths that Flume brought us back in the day. Highly recommend it. If you're a bass head or, you know, don't really listen to a lot of down tempo stuff, check out 53 Thieves. All right, we're starting to get into the melodic bass here now. What are we at? Number 17, Remedy, William Black, and Annie Schindel. Really love her voice though. I see a lot more collabs in her future. Love that he put the chords alongside with her vocals. Just everything you want from this, uh, you know, this type of song. Got uplifting, almost kind of like a nostalgic feel to it. One of my favorite parts about this drop too is he has these little vocal accents in the drop here. Right? Such a nice touch. This one had to be probably one of the more surprising tracks for me. Um, I know Kaiwachi's really known for like that really just in your face violent bass music. So when I saw a collab with Run, I was like, well, she's known for the soft melodic collabs typically. So this is gonna be uh, different. And um, it really, really surprised me. Really cool with the dissonant kind of like off pitch tone. Didn't really expect him to like bring the heaviness alongside her vocals, but it worked. But in all honesty, the whole reason this is number 16 on the list is the second half of the song. The way he teased this build and then turn it into what I believe was like a swung beat, like swung and broken. These eight note chords here, oh yeah. Just what? It's out of left field. And this is what sold it right here. I'm a sucker for this shit. Like what? Yeah, like her, her vocal manipulations like swung over this heavy on a poly. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. So creative. One of the more impressive bass tracks of the year. A song I love so much, I bought the damn hoodie. Oh, let's see the back, let's see the back. Can we see it? Can we see it? Anyways, um, Oceans and Galaxies, Halion, probably my favorite vocalist in the scene. 
does everything from trance to bass music to melodic bass, so. And shout out to Jaws for playing this in his live sets, despite it not being the heaviest of tracks. Um, I really respect that, like when an artist plays like songs he knows most fans are gonna wanna hear, but like might not be an absolute crowd pleaser at the same time. Just love this sound. Such a warm, kind of like open feel to it. Because like it's no secret, Jaws can bring the heat and it felt like this was a perfect balance of just enough bass, but like not so much as to overwhelm her vocals. I love the hi-hat in here too. But somebody mentioned it kind of sounded out of place. I think I like it. Coming to number 14, Elenium, Emma Grace. Um, if you saw my Elenium album reaction on Sidewalk, I think a big reason why this is a favorite for me is because you, if you listen to that album in order, it's just a constant build. And for like a classic Elenium fan, you're kind of wanting a little bit more of the old sound, but trying to embrace the new. And this just really gives you that that hit of why you're an Elenium fan. On top of just the raw emotion, it, it demands, you know, if you know the backstory of this song, which I'm sure a good amount of you have seen, really powerful. I mean, I had news the first time I listened. And it's such a slow build too, like you're waiting the whole song for one singular drop as opposed to multiple. The classic Millennium Riser. Now I will say with that one, I think it is more powerful in the context of the album itself. Um, as a singular song, it might not have reached as high on my list, but because you know that initial impact of when I listened to it, it's automatically stuck in my top 25 for sure. All right, starting it real good. Who else but Seven Lions to put together one of these classics that people are gonna be singing at festivals for years to come? He usually has one or two a year that are just absolutely gonna be stuck in your brain. This is one of them. I mean, I think it's safe to say this song kind of gives you everything you want as a Seven Lions fan. This angelic kind of medieval atmosphere, you know, with, with kind of those trance inspired sounds that, that he kind of pulls from on above and beyond. And this beautiful melodic dubstep drop, and then it gets violent with Wooly. Too good. Yeah, crowd pleaser, checks off all the boxes. Honestly, this one would have fell further down on the list, but I really do like what he did with the third drop. He's got these staccato groups of 16 notes here. I like that as kind of a change up, keep it interesting. Pixels Terror. One of the artists of the year for me, they put out so much heat in 2021. You know, there was like five separate Pixel Terror songs I could have placed in this spot, but uh, I just love how this one releases into this pre-drop. Too good. Love how they, they kind of incorporate like that glitch hop and dubstep all together. So gross. Let me get this real good back and forth. You know, this one was one of my favorites on my initial reaction. This is, uh, for the first drop alone, just absolute hype. You need a workout, you need to go on a run. And if it isn't obvious by now, like really tight staccato 16th notes, always gonna be a sucker for that. Just love how it's like perpetually ascending right here in the second half. And then we just kind of like drift out of it and do a more chill thing. One thing I want to highlight, if anybody, especially this time of year, is listening to the Cascade Christmas album, I swear to God, this little vocal sample in here, right here, is from his like Cascade Christmas album, it's like, I think, I forget which song it is. Maybe it's Jingle Bells cover. It just reminds me of it. I don't know. Shot in the dark. 
All right, number 10. I think we all know this is one of the bassy masterpieces of the summer. You have so much talent on this track, and then, you know, the mastermind, Skrillex, it delivered. And it's just got like this like subtle, dark, kind of angry vibe to it, but still stays down tempo. Love what they did with the percussion too. A lot of like skipped beat, kind of a little bit off time on the back of the beat sometimes, if you will. And then they just go in on the second half here. Getting them with the triplets. Song six. Wanted to make it number six. Couldn't put it that high up. We got nine, flip it around. Yeah, Death Pact is one of the more underappreciated artists out there. Um, two massive hits with Rez now. Not sure why he doesn't have more of a following. He sold his soul for this. What did you have to give? Got that real ominous dark sound. Nuts. Sound selection, sound design, top notch. And then this drum fill here to end this. Oh! That's, that's why this is top 10. And then he ends this with just this ridiculous, what started out believably as, you know, a drummer playing some ridiculous pattern, and then it just gets into like some crazy programmed MIDI. Uh, makes me want to get on a set and try and replicate it. I think it's really impossible here. Damn! So good. A song that holds a special spot in my heart. Um, my first song of the week when made the move over to Sidewalk Talk. Uh, still an absolute classic. I cannot believe Crystal Skies pulled this off with this like four on the floor kind of like melodic progressive house if that's what we want to call it. And then Echo on the vocals. Pristine. This is kind of one of those songs that just doesn't lose the, the impact it has, even if you've listened to it on repeat. It's just perpetual good vibes. Just such an open, big reverb lead. Massive. It's one of those songs that has commercial appeal, but the production quality is so good that like everybody should like it. Oh, I just want to be in the sun next to thousands of people under the lasers and the lights. This was hard not to have in my top five. I'm not even a huge Midas fan, but this is an absolute masterpiece. Featuring Sounder. This is just like a an emotional ballad that delivers uh, exactly what you're looking for if you're melodic bass. These eight note chords. Such a warm, warm sound. That's it, Bill. Perfect amount. Opens the filter, get a little more brassy. Marching snare in the background's a nice touch. Yeah, no, this this song just has all the details. Just a brilliant melody. Drums punch through, perfect amount. Favorite part. Yeah, that's. I think that's what did it for me. Is that that little like arpeggiated, high pitched, airy, screaming. Quite a lengthy drop too. And then just beautiful transitions. This is my, in my opinion, it had to be his best song off that album. I think the rest of the album sounded really similar to each other, but this one stuck out to me. This would have been number five, but a uh, recent song bumped it out of the top five. We'll see that in a second. Reaper, Bella Renee. Favorite drum and bass track of the year, hands down. Doesn't waste any time, straight to the point. Let 
we got this quarter note triplet coming up, real heavy and saturated. Exactly what I want. And it's not the most elaborate drum and bass track. It's not a masterpiece, but uh, it's just one of those ones I want in my workout playlist. I want on repeat. It's, it's just essential. All right, number five, Gravity. Slander Subtronics, JT Roach, uh, one of the cooler collabs of the year. This one's just a masterpiece, split down the middle between both styles perfectly. You go from the cinematic ballad to this just over the top, full to the max. And then this sound right here, sounds like a demon getting stuck in saran wrap. Love these eight notes bouncing around in the background. And then we get this like 16 note run here. Oh! But let's be honest, the real reason this is number five is that third and final drop. Just want to break your neck to it. All right, the song that snuck its way into the top five, if you saw my sidewalk top five, is a little slightly different because Temanite with Sail Away had to get it at number four. I love how he gets this like melodic theme present throughout the song and then just smacks you around with all this creative dubstep, just so good. These chords here. a Tem Night synth just goes to town. Just love this theme in here. I mean, not much needs to be said. Number three, Awaken AU5 and NOHC. Um, gotta be up there for one of the best melodic dubstep tracks of the year, if not all time. I love how we get this preview of kind of the main theme here, but doesn't give it all away. Fades back out. Just absolutely beautiful, the right amount of a tease to keep you listening for a little longer. And then just this release here with the guitar. <laughs> oh man. And then this guitar melody in here just gets you hyped. And I've said it before, I'm not usually a big fan of the electric guitar mixed with melodic dubstep. I think sometimes it doesn't really sound great, but he nailed the balance here. And obviously this song is six minutes long, extremely dynamic, just kind of a great example of like what melodic dubstep should be. Uh, I feel like we, we get a lot of drops and stuff that aren't super creative just kind of stick the one idea subtle variation or fake out and drop too but not much not never with au5 it's always creative coming in number two sleepless pixel terror chime temanite when i saw this these three together you knew it was gonna be good the chords right away have me interested i love that sound again i think i gotta credit temanite for the melody in here so damn catchy and with this glitchiness we're about to get The head banging section. And then I love how this kind of gets brought home to the original melody and then just kind of leave it at that. And then if you wanted to know why this is number two on the list, we just go nuts with this lead. Oh, it's just. Just an insane, an insane arrangement.
beautiful with the bells to end it. I mean, it has the musicality, it has the glitchiness, it has the bass. Yeah, it's got it all. Number one, Last Heroes, Mark Claver, always like this. I, th this one's gonna be a favorite for a long time to come. Also loved this whole Threads EP, added every single song off of it. The atmosphere this song sets is second to none. Love the texture on the percussion. And they kind of leave you hanging. Most melodic dubstep, melodic bass tracks usually move right into this drop at this point. It just kind of fades out, we go on to another verse. This entire song is a build. I think that's why I like it so much. You can just feel the raw emotion in his voice. Like, this song's so damn powerful. Like there are bullshit lyrics and then there are genuine lyrics. And this is, you can just tell. We're going full for the volume here. Wall of sound incoming. a friend that doesn't think they like electronic music and show them this especially if they appreciate a little bit of rock that electric guitar in there perfect balance again similar to the au5 track um these melodic dubstep songs that find that balance oh my god it just has that extra edge so good i try not to listen to that i've listened to this song maybe like three or four times since i heard it um just to preserve that that dopamine, that serotonin you get. Uh, Last Heroes is just top notch. All right, I hope y'all enjoyed it. Top 25, let me know what y'all's top 25 was. Let me know if you think I omitted one that definitely should have been on this list. Hopefully this wasn't too long. If I ended up splitting it up, we'll see what I do in post. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell notification. You'll usually see my weekly reacts on Sidewalk and then uh, maybe I'll do some stuff like this on here every once in a while. Um, yeah, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon.